So we need the whole nation support. We need the government to support us at least from now on. The Indian government should come forward and support the right. uh, commissar. All right, all right. Thanks very much for joining us with your thoughts, Prabhakar. Um, I, before I come across uh, to you, Mr. Murari, and I know you've been waiting patiently. We've got a lot of callers and a lot of voices on what is clearly a very emotive issue. Just bear with me. I'll come back to you. I just want to get in, Mr. Suren Surender, and from the Global Tamil Forum, who's joining us on the phone line from London. Thanks very much uh, for joining us, Suren. Do you think that it is time that India puts are the concerns about the rights of uh, Tamils in Sri Lanka foremost and takes up uh, the cause of the Sri Lankan Tamils and then votes in favor of the UN resolution? Most certainly, most certainly. India is the closest neighbor to Sri Lanka. India is the superpower in the region. India has got 60 million Tamils in Tamil Nadu. Uh, uh, the Tamils in Sri Lanka are only 22 miles away. Um, the UN panel, uh, the United Nations expert panel appointed by the Secretary General um, has estimated over 40,000 were slaughtered in the last few weeks of the war in 2009. 40,000 civilians. There, there are allegations, there are allegations like you just showed us um, on, on a clip from Palita Kohana, uh, the former Foreign Secretary of Sri Lanka. Yeah. He claimed there was only 80,000 people who, who were civilians in, in, within that uh, no-fire zone. The government of Sri Lanka know, knew that there were more than 300,000 people in there. President Rajapaksha was on record saying that there was only 10 to 20,000 people in the no-fire zone. Right. It was proven that there were 300,000 people. President Rajapaksha, with the intent, made the number so small so that he knew that by the time we finish the war, there will be lots of civilians killed and there will be a very small number that's left. So he estimated it small and he only sent food and medicine uh, to uh, 20,000 people when there were 300 or more thousand people so, in so that area. So you're saying it is now he time for the Indian government uh, to, to also join the rest of the world leaders in demanding accountability for war crimes in Sri Lanka? Absolutely. All right. A absolutely. All right. All right. So then stay with us. St stay with us. We come back to you and Minakshi. We've got a lot of callers. Let's get in another caller, Mushtaq, on the phone line from Srinagar. Go ahead, Mushtaq. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. I'm Mushtaq, speaking from Srinagar. Yes, sir. I think it's unfortunate what is happening in Sri Lanka is unfortunate. Everyone should condemn it. It should be condemned for one and all. And international community should stop our pressure on the second government. But as far as the role of India is concerned, it has no right to speak or to interfere into the internal affairs of Sri Lanka because that would amount to part calling the cat of black. All right. Involved in human rights violation in Kashmir. All so right. How can all right, let me, let me toss that thought across to Mr. S. Murari, who's uh, very patiently standing by, and then I'm going to get in a Commodore Udaya Bhaskar in just a bit. But Mr. Murari, that very thought of, if you look at the, at the larger picture, as, as one of our colleagues just, uh, just said, you know, it, it would amount to the pot calling the kettle black if India then chooses to interfere in Sri Lanka's internal matters. Would it be so, Mr. Murari? Does it say that India's human rights record is very poor, uh, as, bad, as bad as in Sri Lanka? I really don't understand the question at all. India is a neighbor and it has a security interest also in the region. And more than that, you know, quite apart from the, uh, the relation between the Tamils of Sri Lanka and the Tamils in Tamil Nadu, mm -hmm. there are geopolitical concerns also. So India is the only country which has an agreement with Sri Lanka, which forms a, is even now forms a framework for a political settlement, even after the war. And what people have forgotten is, during the final persecution of the war, right. India gave military help to the Sri Lankan government. They have radars and other logistic support. Yeah. They have stepped up uh, for surveillance. India played a very cool role, uh, key role in the Sri Lankan army defeating the LTT. Yeah. Let us not confuse the LTT with the Sri Lankan Tamils. They are two different issues. Exactly. Fighting terrorism or whatever. And the way the government has gone about it, the army had gone about it, it is, let us, there are two sides. One is the Sri Lankan Lessons Letter and Recession Committee report. Yes. He says the military strategy was not flawed. It, they deliberately moved slowly so that to avoid heavy civilian casualties. On the other hand, the UN Expert Committee, which went to the same issue, said there was indiscriminate shelling of uh, uh, civilian areas in the Vani region, hospitals were hit, and if by considerable estimate, somebody said 40,000, I am going by a very considerable estimate, 22,500 would have died, at least 2,500. That is and one aspect. That is channel 4 video. Channel 
civilian deaths. I'm talking about civilian deaths. Yeah. They, because as soon they were moving towards, they did not want pressure to build up. They wanted to wipe them out so before. Then, so then, is it, is it time the now, Mr. Burari? Is it time now to set aside political differences and and to take a stand as a nation? And should the government, in its action at the UN vote, then reflect that stand? No, 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 no. no there are two ways of going about it. Well, at this point, I think India has, in a way, reassured the Sri Lankan government that it would not do anything that would in any way either distort or disrupt the current level of the bilateral engagement. Now, Sri Lanka, like many of our other neighbors, is a very important member of the regional community. And we are aware that the Rajapaksha government had taken certain political and military steps in dealing with the LTTE. India in a traditional way has tried to encourage required diplomacy, the equivalent of suggesting that political accommodation be sought. All right, all right, Commodore, thanks. Uh, you, you, you've just cut in, Mr. Murari. Uh, Mr. Murari, very quickly make your point, because I have to take another caller. Hello. Mr. Bodari, you were making a point there, sir. Yeah, yeah. Can I go? Can I go on? Can I go on? Yes. See, the point is, India has a moral responsibility to the Tamils, being a signatory to the peace agreement, yeah. which is now, which is now going to be the basis. It's now being resurrected now as a fi uh, basis for a final settlement. And already it has been violated in the sense of the demerger of the uh, North and East, which is the homeland of the Tamils. Yeah. That let us not go into details. Mm. The point is, no, but sure, I, very, very clearly, yes or no, uh, very clearly. Uh, yeah. Murari, should India vote in favor of this resolution? India should put pressure on the Sri Lankan government to take action against the, uh, those responsible for war crimes. For war let crime. us see what, what shape the resolution is going to take. All but right. India is turned out, so let us wait for the resolution, what it is going to say. All I right. don't agree with India's policy, we yeah. will not support country specific resolution. All All right. Right. But, it's, but it's time for accountability. It's time for accountability. I have to take in another caller, Mr. Vetrivelu, joining us from Chennai. Go ahead, sir. Sir, thank you very much. Go ahead, sir. You're we, on air. We have, we have to support American that resolution. Otherwise, it will be a big cause. We are all against the federal government. We will not see any federal when they are coming to Chennai. This, the Congress planning from Tamil Nadu. We know. Yeah. All right. Just, just All right. Up. All right, we're having a bit of uh, a bit of audio trouble with that phone line to Mr. Vetrivelu, but I suppose the the, the context of uh, or the gist of what he was saying was that it is time for us uh, as a country and the Indian government to really demand accountability from the Sri Lankan government and President Mahinda Rajapaksa's government in Sri Lanka. Thank you very much, uh, Commodore Dev Bhaskar, Minakshi Ganguly, uh, also Suren Surendran, uh, Mr. S. Murari from Chennai, uh, and uh, of course High Commissioner Prasad Karyawasam joining us uh, on, uh, on chat from Delhi. But thanks very much. Stay tuned to NewsX. Up next, NewsX at 9.